What's up out there? I have something a little bit different today and I've, I've recorded this video multiple times. I just haven't quite gotten the format where I want it. I think I know what I want to do now and we're going to dive into it. So this is a review or a suggestion. If you're interested in a new idle game, this is farmer against potatoes idle. And somebody brought this game to my attention. I looked at it. I thought it looked cool. Uh, I love the the little comical theme of a farmer actually killing off potatoes that are attacking him in various biomes and whatever. I thought it was really cool looking, so I gave it a shot. This game, uh, it, it w immediately interested me, but I didn't really get the game until a week or so into it. Uh, basically, you have to manually do everything at first. And over time, the game automates a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more. And once this little gear started spinning up here to completely automate or to automate certain aspects of it, uh, the automatic level switching and stuff like that. Like when you first start the game, you have to allocate all the different uh, uh, currencies or whatever you want to call this. And you have to ma manually change levels and things like that. Once you start unlocking things, all of this starts becoming automated. And the more of that that happened, uh, the more in, uh, invested I got into this game. So let me do some backstory here. This is a free to play game. Uh, this is released by Oni Gaming. Uh, they have another game called Wizard and Minion Idol. I have not tried that yet. This came out into early access on August 25th of 2022. Now, a viewer of the channel brought this to my attention. I looked at it and I thought, that eh, looks cool. And I kind of sat on it for a little while. I did not realize what kind of idle game this was. Basically, it's like Melver where you have to check it every 24 hours. And I kind of just lazily checked it every few days at the first, at the very first. And then once I started getting into it, I was checking it once a day. Now I'm checking it about twice a day. I don't really go out of my way to work on this one. There's not really like a story or anything to worry about. But there is, with an idle game, you're basically guiding a ship. You're going to make an adjustment and watch it go for a little while and then make an, another adjustment and watch it go. Uh, that's pretty much what you're doing. Now, what I like about Melver Idle specifically, what draws me in, because I... I've been look since I got into Melver Idol. I didn't at first. I didn't know what an idle game was. Then I saw Melver Idol. It looked cool. I gave it a shot. And then I found this whole genre of idle games. And a couple of years ago, when I started playing that, I looked across the spectrum and looked at what games are out there, like Cookie Clicker and stuff like that. The clicky games, I don't really care for. I don't want to have to work my mouse a million times. It just, I don't know. Diablo is that kind of game where you got to click around. And that's kind of very low. Um, how can I say that? Diablo is basically a clicker game in some regards. The original Diablo, even Diablo 2 kind of is. And those games don't make me feel like I'm doing a whole lot compared to like a shooter or something where you're jumping and you know, you're know you making some effort. So I don't like things that are just too simple. I guess is what I'm trying to say is I don't like games that are just completely simple that you just click a million times and the faster you click, the better off you are. That turns me off. Um, so games like cookie clicker and stuff like that just don't interest me. What drives my interest in Melver Idol and why I keep playing it today is there's a lot of replay value. Um, there's a, a lot of depth to the game. Like it starts off real simple. You go click on a, a skill like a, a gathering skill, like wood cutting or, or fishing or something like that. You just literally click the button and walk away. You let it do its thing. And then you come back and redirect it. There's a lot of, uh, I don't want to say skills, but there's a lot of thought that goes into how you develop your character and where you place things and learning all the mechanics of the game and stuff like that. The other things that I really like about Melver Idol is how, um, um, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Oh, words are hard, accessible. That's the word I'm looking for. And I don't mean like uh, disability accessibility kind of things, not that. What I mean by accessibility is how I can play Melver Idol. Like it's a web-based game. It's got a Steam uh, client. I can play it on Steam Deck. I can play it on uh, mobile. If I had a tablet, I could play it on tablet. Um, so it's, it's widely accessible. So if I go on vacation or something, I can still play Melver Idol. Uh, I can carry it with me if I'm off on a trip or something like that. I can play it wherever I'm at and it's offline, you know, constant progression. Even though there is hardcore mode where you can actually lose things, um, you don't really have to, it's not like, 
it's not like Call of Duty where you have to be present for it constantly all the time. I love playing shooters and things like that, but there is a time for when you just want to chill out, you're watching TV or something, it's been a long day, you just want to pop on, see what, you know, what crops need harvested, stuff like that. It's just real simple. I just want to play something, put some thought into it and move on. And that's what I love about Melver Idol. So the way that ties into this game is that this game is basically a lot like that. There is a Steam client, which I'm on right now. Uh, this also plays on Steam Deck, and there is a mobile client. Now, I will say the mobile client, I, I use a little phone for it. It would probably be a lot better on a tablet. Uh, the buttons are very small, very hard to click on and things, so I, I don't really use that unless I absolutely have to. My ideal experience is logging into the PC side of things because it's nice big screen, nice big buttons to click on. Uh, especially like some of these options in here where you have to go change your values and things like that. Uh, you can set pre a couple of presets, which you have to buy the presets. Um, there's a lot of merit to this, but on mobile, I don't care for it as much. Uh, they need to really work on the mobile client for this game. It's workable, but the buttons are just microscopic and I have giant fingers and hands and it's hard to click on some of this stuff so mobile experience is not great it's passable the the cool thing with this game is unlike melver there is no like this is just all combat you basically sit here there's no interaction that's required uh your farmer just keeps fighting wave after wave of potatoes and each wave unlocks a new level or once you've beaten uh so many waves of them it unlocks a new level and you go on now, the interesting thing with this game, and this is why my videos get too long and I'm going to keep an eye on my time because I don't want this to go 30 minutes, but um, there are a lot of systems at play. And I should add, this is an early access game. So you, as you kill potatoes, you get uh, potatoes, you get potato points or whatever you want to call it. And you can spend them into these three different tiers of things here. So all of these uh, go into benefiting other aspects of the game everything in here ties together somehow i'm still trying to understand it all but as you play you generate potatoes you spend those potatoes like i said at first you have to manually spend all these but then you can just automate it and this thing passes through very slowly then there's an upgrade you can get to that to where it passes through very quickly and it just tries to spend you know every second it tries to upgrade these which is good so there's a potato side then you get gear you get all this gear and you can upgrade the gear the gear upgrade system is a little odd you have to drag this over here and then you click the upgrade button uh the other thing that was kind of odd and i didn't really get there's this clear all button here if i click this it just deletes everything in here but if i want to delete one specific item i click this and then click that button down here with the helmet uh that one was a little weird i the the different gear uh you can actually upgrade these so if you've got twelve thousand of these you're going to upgrade them to uh, the upgrade the common to uncommon and so on. I've kind of gotten to where I just leave it and whatever. I just let it sit there for now because I keep generating more. So I don't upgrade it. Uh, then there's these skulls that you generate. These are basically uh, you get skulls when you've completed a level or die, you get a blob of skulls to come on in here. And again, these are automated. Then you've got the talent tree. So, these chunks here down at the end all have to unlock once you reach 2000 in each skill level. There's our class. There's all these different classes you got to do. Um, and then there's this talent tree. Again, you can automate the talent tree. It's very manual for a long time until you unlock the, the automated components. There's a teleportation section here. There's worms. As you play the game more, you can start getting worms and then worm poop and worm larva. They haven't implemented this worm silk yet. So we don't know what that's going to do. This is an early access if I haven't mentioned that, but you basically spend these into these various different points. And like this gives you skulls bonus or potato bonus. Again, I'm still trying to figure out how all the relation of this goes, but you're going to put points in here for say increased attack and HP and regen. There's also stuff for attack and HP and regen in the skull section. There's also HP and regen here in the, um, the worm section, like the, all of this combines together to get you further into the game and higher levels and all that kind of thing. Uh, from there, we've got the reincarnation. So once you reach certain levels with all each of these, is it each of these or it's a certain level overall, um, then you can reincarnate. 
I'm sorry, I'm getting that wrong. That's the ascension. I'm I'm thinking of the ascension. So on the reincarnation, you basically choose when you want to reincarnate. Once you get to a certain point, you click a skill, you tell it to reincarnate. Now you want to level all of these up and try to work them all up together uh, somehow, some way. I usually take these at a, you know the same rate. Again, I don't know how all these plug into everything else, but if you level all these up, you've got um, the farmer being the generic class. You've got the smasher being attack. You've got the hoer being HP and regen, the harvester's critical and uh, critical cap. Then you've got rancher with evade and evade cap, and you've got freeloader with drop chance and drop uh, cap max for gear. So basically you want to raise your critical and your hit points and all that kind of thing, and then get better gear and then do the general. So right now I'm working on ascension level, which we'll get to that over in this UFO tab. So as you get enough of, uh, as you reincarnate enough times, more things pop up. Like you're seeing a lot of stuff unlocked here. Uh, if I reincarnate, a lot of this goes away and starts over. Like all these maps go away. I, I lose this button here altogether until I get a certain wave of, uh, of uh, potatoes in here. Uh, it, it, it's just like a big vicious circle. So you reset things after so many, every reincarnation resets certain things. Then there's the reincarnation bonuses. So like I, you spend into each one of these, there's various upgrades to give you more bonuses on top of things. Then there's some perennial bonuses you get in here. Uh, then you have to reach certain ascensions to unlock other things. Like a lot of these are ascension six, 12, uh, three, 10, like I have to ascend. So pretty much, uh, I am at level, I am at reincarnation level 4691. If I click over here to the UFO, I need to be at level 5,152 to reach the next ascension. Okay, cool. So you reincarnate so many times, then you ascend, then you reincarnate so many times and you ascend. Every time you do all of these different operations, the game keeps changing. Like uh, once you're able to automate things, the game changes a little bit more. Once you're able to reincarnate, the game changes a little bit more. Once you're able to ascend, it changes a little bit more. And there's constantly things like this. Like I've got these tabs here. I don't know what this does until I hit reincarnation three. I've never seen it. Don't know what it is. And even some of these, like I think I might have all the potato stuff. Uh, there, this is ascension four. Uh, this is a certain level that I haven't got to. I haven't reached world five at all yet. So I have no idea what that does. Um, if we come over here to the cow area, like you start off with this column here and then you unlock this column once you've put enough points in, then you unlock this column. And once this grows enough, you unlock this column. So you can see these, I don't even have all of it unlocked. I have, I have to finish this off and this, I haven't even reached ascension five yet, but there's more currency with milk and uh, milk residue. Then your worms go here. You can buy more cows and cows generate this. There's all kinds of different aspects. And then there's a shop in here for buying various, uh, you can see I gotta get so much residue, so many ascensions, blah, 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 all this good stuff in here. So there's a lot of systems at play. And then that doesn't get into challenges, which I did all these challenges. Each challenge unlocks a bunch of things like reward points, reincarnation points, uh, worms, uh, new abilities and stuff like that. I don't know if I have to redo these on every ascension, I'm not sure. Um, but they're de definitely well worth doing. And then you come up here, there's even more. There's like a multiplayer event they're going to do at some point. There's this whack-a-mole thing, kind of. And you get these, which automate certain pulls of it. And there's a shop here for even more stuff to buy. Uh, then you've got, well, this is like achievements and um, uh, daily achievements. This is like leaderboards and stuff like that. Um, but then there's even more stuff to spend. And this is where the cash shop is. So we're going to show this one here in a second. Uh, these soul coins, you can buy these, these are little boosters you can do while you're playing, but there is a shop here for, you can get so many of these soul coins per day. And then you buy all these little upgrades. There's more upgrades here. These things automate things like, uh, using up materials, spending potatoes and stuff like that. But then over on further over, you can actually spend real money on buying these. So like I said, the game is free to play. There is some paid stuff. I did flip out 20 bucks for the starter pack. Um, I've, I played this game for probably a month and I thought it's worth $20. I can throw that in there. You get basically with the starter pack, they unlock a few of these items. I can't remember which one it was. Maybe this confectioner or something like that, but they unlock a couple of these and then 
gradually as you play, you get more of these soul coins and unlock more. Uh, this is just a help menu over here. And then this is like some help and metrics and stuff. This thing just showed up today. So they're going to add some farming at some point. So like I said, the game is in early access and it keeps developing. They keep adding stuff and upgrading things. Oh, there's a whole pet system. I forgot about the pet system. As you clear out some of these levels, you get these pets and each pet has different bonuses. Um, for certain things. And then you, you have, you start off with like uh, one pet slot and then you got to open up another one. And then depending on which store you're in, like this thing, I think maybe had a pet slot. Uh, I can't remember uh, here. I think this was it. So then there's other pet slots open in maybe this, this menu here, there might be some for sale. So there's different aspects that affect it. Different aspects affect your inventory and things like that. It's all over the place. So this video is getting very long and I don't want to keep it going any further. There's a really deep rabbit hole here. Uh, the game is very interesting. It's very cool. Uh, I really wanted this to be a much shorter video, but it, there's so much to talk about with this game, all the different bonuses, how everything interacts and all that. Then there's things. If you click on stuff in the level, you get like little achievements and things like that. Uh, you might get smoke coming out of here, break windows or trees pop up or something like that. Anyway, there's, there's a lot of depth to this game. So if you're interested in, if you like Melver Idol and you like a lot of the things that Melver Idol does, this game does a lot of those ticks, a lot of those same boxes, but it's completely different. It's got its own thing to it. And basically what you're trying to do here, as far as I can tell is to see how fast you can get to the next, uh, Ascension. And you know, you're trying to speed through, reincarnation get to the next ascension and that's basically what you're doing is just steering this ship to go faster and faster and faster and you try to get unlocks and stuff like that it plays itself it just sits in the background you check it a few times a day it's cool um i highly recommend this i will be looking at other idle games at some point um i've finally gotten to the point where i understand this enough to where i could make a video on it and say hey this is great i've been playing this for two three months now well three or four months now probably um, but anyway, that will do it for this video. We will catch you on the next one. Take care.